Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Thomas Morin, working for uh, Orange Labs. And um, the topic I will talk uh, to you about today is the, the question of uh, how we, we can uh, uh, provide a solution to allow tenants to interconnect multiple uh, uh, OpenStack deployments. So um, between data centers in traditional clouds or between NFV pops, um, you have cases where you will want, as, a, as an end user, uh, to interconnect uh, networks or perhaps uh, virtual routers, virtual networks of virtual routers, uh, with um, uh, specific properties. Uh, so sometimes you will want uh, this to be on, de on demand. Well, in fact, we'll want always this to be on demand. Uh, that can sound uh, obvious, but uh, uh, when you involve multiple OpenStack deployments, it's not because. Uh, some solutions can be available to provide interconnections, but are requiring uh, the intervention of the admins to build the interconnections. Uh, you will want in some cases to be uh, the interconnections to be on demand and uh, providing uh, private addressing and isolation. Um, that's a pretty common need. Uh, these two things you you can do them today with um, a solution such as um, a Neutron VPN as a service. Uh, but behind the scene, it involves uh, using IPsec, which has a significant uh, uh, performance overhead, and you could want a solution that would be both on demand, provide private addressing and isolation, and also avoid the overhead of a packet encryption. So what I'm going to discuss afterwards is a solution uh, with these three properties. So one solution. Uh, which you can use today um, involves adding an orchestrator on top of uh, uh, the different clouds in which you have resources that you want to interconnect. Uh, so this is something that's, that can be viable, but it's not always possible or it's not always wanted. Uh, there are various reasons. Um, first of all, this orchestrator may need uh, admin rights to set up networking, and this can be complicated to achieve in context where uh, different Organizations are involved uh, to handle these different clouds. Uh, you may also, uh, well, you will also want to, uh, for this to be in demand, to expose some API to the, to the projects. Uh, so that's an additional requirement put on the orchestrator. And uh, whatever you do, you will have a solution which is, uh, with uh, the extra complexity brought by uh, this additional uh, uh, orchestrator. So. With this in mind, we wanted to explore a solution uh, that would work without having to introduce uh, an orchestrator in, in, in the picture. The solution that we, that we came up with, the proposal that we came up with, uh, is a proposal in which we extend uh, Neutron's uh, API uh, with two facets. Uh, the, the first uh, facet is a, a user, the user-facing API. It's a simple API that lets uh, a tenant project define that a local resource, network A, for instance, um, will be interconnected, will need to be interconnected uh, to um, a remote resource, network B, on another OpenStack. Um, the way that this API will be used is that the end user, the, the, the project, here depicted as a monkey, uh, we'll do symmetrical calls on both uh, OpenStack uh, uh, clouds. So on one side, you say, I want to connect network A here with network B on the other side. And on the other side, you say, I want to interconnect network B here with the network A on the other side. And then uh, what, what uh, the other facet is, uh, is, uh, is introduced. Uh, it's a neutron to neutron API which, which, uh, which uh, explained the title of the, the presentation. And, and this API will allow each neutron to check if the symmetrical interconnection has been defined on the other side. So here, uh, after a call one, well, the symmetric uh, interconnection definition has not been defined on the other side, so the test will fail. But after a call two, uh, the, the, the test will succeed. And we will be able to proceed. I will explain a bit more better, a bit more uh, afterwards. Um, th the rest of the process, of the process will, uh, will be um, 
uh, ready for the technical parameters to be exchanged so that an actual interconnection is set up between the, the two clouds. So the parameters that will be exchanged will depend on the, the actual technique that, that you will use to interconnect, uh, that will be used to interconnect the two clouds. But in the end, um, at the end of the exchange, everything has been exchanged, exchanged um, and each neutron has been able to do the local work required to set up the interconnection. Uh, that can sound a bit abstract because we don't talk here uh, about the technique that's actually uh, used. And it's actually on purpose. Uh, um, and I will explain this uh, a bit afterward. But before uh, jumping uh, on the topic of uh, the actual interconnection technique, uh, it's important to explain why we have this uh, uh, symmetry of uh, API calls. And the reason is that as soon as we talk about uh, multi-tenancy and needs for uh, network isolation, uh, it implies that we address uh, trust questions and security questions. And here, um, the requirement is that, um, well, we need to trust the overall system that uh, isolation will be preserved. Uh, said uh, uh, differently, uh, the goal is that no interconnection should be set up unless, unless it was explicitly asked uh, by each tenant. A tenant should not end up with uh, his network resources interconnected with something else that he doesn't know or care about. And how it's done is that uh, the interconnect will be set up only if both sides agrees. And that's the reason for this uh, symmetricity of uh, the definitions and of the neutron to neutron uh, check at steps 1 bis and 2 bis here uh, by each neutron that the other side has received the same symmetrical definition. So the, the implication behind this is that, of course, uh, each OpenStack instance has to trust um, that the other OpenStack instance will implement the same, uh, the same contract and also has to trust the packets coming from the other side. If you, if you want a proposal that, uh, that uh, will work in cases where you don't have this trust relationship, well, then you need to rely on something closer to IPsec VPNs, um, uh, which is not the scope of this uh, presentation. The other thing that you need to care about um, uh, in terms of a security and trust question is the, the authentication of uh, the API exchanges uh, between the two neutrons. And here, the design is simple enough um, because um, the only requirement that we have is that each neutron uh, simply needs uh, credentials to talk to the other side. It doesn't need to have write access uh, to the other side. It only needs uh, read-only access to the interconnection info, so it's very scoped and restricted. Um, uh, and for this to be feasible, we just, you just need one user existing on the other, uh, the credentials for one user existing on the other side. Um, in practice, to make a configuration uh, comfortable to set up, uh, we believe that uh, keystone generation will be interesting to add to the picture so that uh, in cases where you don't have two clouds but uh, uh, let's say a dozen, you don't have to configure too many credentials uh, there. Uh, but this is not uh, inherent to the proposal. So let's go back to interconnection techniques. So the, the reason why the, the first slide in this talk don't talk much about the details of how things are interconnected is that uh, the design is really agnostic to interconnection techniques. So what I call an, inter an interconnection technique is what we end up using so that packets can actually flow uh, between what we have interconnected with the API. Um, so the goal is here to have uh, to allow um, is that to allow a given technique, let's say I don't know, uh, GRE tunnel stitching or VXLAN uh, uh, stitching, uh, to allow a given technique to be used, we will just need to write a simple driver for it. And in this case, you can see the the neutron neutron API exchange as a simple uh, conduit uh, to carry whatever information is needed. Uh, to establish the interconnection, whether it is a data plane ID, a VXLAN ID, uh, IPs, or authentication parameters, and, and so on. So the design is really agnostic to interconnection techniques. Uh, and the one thing that we can say is that if you are in a case uh, of a deployment where more than one technique is supported, 
um, we, we simply need to define how a given technique uh, is selected for a given interconnection. Uh, and this will typically be done via configuration, which is pretty straightforward. Use uh, technique foo with cloud uh, X and uh, technique uh, uh, bar with uh, cloud Y. Uh, we, we, we consider the possibility of introducing uh, negotiation into the picture so that uh, uh, the thing could be more finely grained negotiated, but for now we, we, we kept it out of the picture. It's something that we could revisit, but, for, but we see today we see more benefits in keeping the solution uh, simple. So in the end, uh, for a given technique to be applicable in the context of the solution, uh, you need a technique that will be able to provide uh, isolated uh, network connectivity. The network connectivity could be L2 and or L3. If you have a solution that can do both, of course, it's interesting. Um, but if you only need L3, well, a solution that only does L3 is fine as well. Uh, interoperability is preferred uh, because it will make a solution applicable uh, between two open stacks that do not necessarily use the same SDN controller solution. So examples that we can mention, um, one of them is VLAN handoff, uh, another is VXLAN gateways. We could also consider um, leveraging the work done in the networking L2 gateway project. Uh, BGP VPNs is uh, another possibility, which I will talk more about this uh, in the next slide. Simple GRE could work as well. It's basically pick your poison. You have to find a, a solution that, uh, that matches uh, your needs. Um, and many, many could, uh, could work. So I mentioned the BGP VPN as a solution, and I will explain um, more uh, about this one. It's actually a, a good fit in this context um, for different reasons. So first of all, uh, you may or may not be uh, familiar with uh, uh, BGP VPNs. Uh, BGP VPNs are, um, uh, is a technique that, that's been used for quite a while now, uh, in particular by uh, telcos, but by many uh, network operating teams, uh, to provide uh, uh, isolated network connectivity over an IP and PLS core. Uh, but it's also a technique that's, uh, that's, that's evolved significantly, and in the past years it's been uh, extended uh, to do not only IP VPNs, but also uh, eVPNs. It relies on exchanges of uh, uh, BGP routes of a specific type uh, associated with uh, the use of uh, uh, data plane encapsulation, such as MPLS or um, uh, VXLAN. So in this context, uh, uh, this technology has a, a few strengths. Uh, one strength is that uh, given how the technology is designed, uh, we can have a local allocation of the IDs that will be exchanged. You don't need to have a, a, a space of IDs, like data plane IDs, that would have to be, for which the use would have to be coordinated uh, between the different clouds. You can have each side allocate the ID that it will uh, advertise to the other side and that it will use uh, to, um, to receive traffic. So this independence provides a, a good isolation. And in the demo, you will see that the configuration that we need to do to use this is actually pretty short. The other strength is that we actually already have uh, in the Neutron Stadium a project that provides uh, an API to control uh, um, BGP VPN interconnections. So we can actually write a driver that will be simply reusing this API. Uh, and it means that the solution will be usable uh, on day one with uh, all the, ex the, the, the different SDN controllers that already have a driver for BGP VPNs. So this is neat, in fact. It's, it's really a service composition, one of the holy graves of uh, SDN in some kind of way, uh, because by just reusing an existing API, we are able to, to build a, a new service. A new service um, compared to BGP VPN the BGP VPN API alone cannot really provide this service because it, it does provide uh, um, the interconnections, but these require admin intervention, uh, and these are not really on demand. Uh, another strength is that uh, you have flexible modalities for uh, uh, deploying this across the one. Uh, you can actually have uh, this uh, routing set up uh, as an overlay on top of uh, IP1 connectivity, but you can also have uh, this set up uh, 
as peerings with one IPMPLS uh, BDP VPN routing. Each OpenStack would be, for instance, uh, a given um, um, IPMPLS uh, auto autonomous system, BDP autonomous, autonomous system, uh, and um, routing would be propagated hop by hop, and the traffic could be carried just as plain uh, IPMPLS VPN traffic uh, over the one. And last, it's a technology that uh, initially was um, providing IP connectivity, but that's been extended with eVPN for quite a few years now. Uh, so you can do both IP and Ethernet interconnects with, uh, with this solution. So now, a demo. So in this demo, uh, well, it's a pretty lightweight demo. Uh, we will see uh, two clouds. Well, in fact, these are very simple clouds. Uh, each cloud is actually uh, a dev stack with, um, and that's why it's interesting, um, Neutron using the ML2 OVS uh, standard drivers, the Neutron Neutron India Connection Service plugin that we actually add to the picture. It is really the, an implementation of uh, this proposal that. Uh, uh, that, that we show. Um, it's configured to use the BTB VPN interconnection driver. And for this to be usable, of course, we need uh, to activate the networking BTB VPN service inside Neutron as well. To, uh, uh, to have the two OpenStack appear uh, with the BTB protocol, we use uh, GoBGP, which is an independent uh, uh, BGP implementation supporting the, the BTB VPN extensions. We could have use something else, uh, for instance, uh, free-run routing. There are various implementations. We could have also used the uh, commercial implementations of, uh, of the stack. There are plenty. Um, and uh, well, to make the, the demo complete, we have uh, simply uh, a user um, with an OpenStack CLI configured to be able to use both clouds in the same, uh, in the same uh, environment. So what we will uh, try to achieve, what we will see in this demo actually, is that we will interconnect network A in the Mars uh, OpenStack with network B on the Pluto OpenStack. And we will actually check that VM1 can ping VM2 and vice versa, which is kind of, uh, uh, if the first one works, the other one will work as well. So. Okay, so initially we just, uh, we simply list the different uh, uh, VMs that we have in this cloud. So we have VM1, VM2, and we know their IPs. We can just uh, start uh, pings toward these two, uh, these two IPs. So VM1 has started a ping to VM2 and vice versa. Of course, we haven't done anything to create an interconnection, so nothing is uh, happening much. So next, we just look at the, the network list on both sides. So here, we actually specify on each common line which cloud we are talking to. So we have listed the network list on uh, cloud Mars. Uh, this is just to retrieve the UUIDs. And based on these UUIDs, we will be able to actually start uh, creating the interconnections. So because it's easier, we actually store these UUIDs in shell variables. So it's, uh, it's just to make the, the rest of the common lines readable, but it's not, uh, not more important. And here is the interesting part. Here, we, the common line is actually not finished. Uh, we are creating on the Mars OpenStack, so it's the first row on the left, um, a request for, for creating an interconnection between local resource network A and as a remote resource, we specify that we want to connect the network B, so we give the UUID of network B, but we also need to explain which, which is the remote open stack, and for this purpose, we, we provide um, the, the Keystone, uh, the Keystone uh, API uh, entry point URL. We also have other parameters that are less interesting to explain. We actually, since we interconnect network and we want IP connectivity, we specify that we want an interconnection of type uh, 
network L3, and we also specify the, the, the region that we need to use, which in this case is uh, region one, the default one, because uh, we only have one. So after this first step, we only, we only have created the, the interconnection on the one side. The one thing that you can see here is that the interconnection is in a two validate state. It means that uh, until we do something else, uh, the, the Mars uh, OpenStack consider that the, 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 there, since there is no symmetric interconnection, it won't do anything with it. So what's interesting is to create uh, a second interconnection. We can actually check that on the other side we don't have any interconnection yet. We can check that even a few seconds afterwards we don't have an interconnection, uh, sorry, we still have the same uh, state for the interconnection on the, on the Mars side. And now we will create the interconnection on, on the other side. So here, we are creating the, the symmetric interconnection. So this time, we are talking to the Pluto uh, OpenStack, and we are speci specifying that the local resource is uh, Pluto network B, and that the remote resource is the UID of network A, and we also, of course, specify that the remote keystone, keystone this time is, is Mars. And once we do this, the, the actual API call returns uh, um, reasonably fast, but the work behind the scene has not been fully done, so we need to wait. Uh, so it's still passed, perhaps. Yep. So now the, the interconnection has been created on the Pluto side, and uh, it's already in state validated, as you can see, because uh, the Pluto side was able to uh, actually see that the symmetric interconnection was existing on the Mars side, and it, it was able to uh, already progress uh, towards setting up the interconnection. It actually allocated the, the BGP VPN identifier that will be used for this interconnection. But if you look at the, if we look, sorry, if we look at what's on the Mars side, we see that on the Mars side, the, the interconnection is not yet fully validated, but a few seconds afterwards, the interconnection is fully validated, and the interconnection uh, is actually set up. We can see the ping flows. So that's the, well, the, the, the key result of this demo, but what's interesting is also to see that uh, for the solution to be complete, we need to handle the full life cycle of interconnection, and it means that at some point, we will destroy a connection um, on one side or the other, and we need, it's interesting to see what happens. In this case, if we delete the interconnection on the, on the Pluto side, then at once the, the, the traffic will stop uh, flowing. But uh, since we can recreate it, uh, and we have a, a properly defined uh, state machine for the state of the interconnections, if we recreate it, it will be, uh, it will be, uh, the interconnection will be usable again. And I think that's it. I don't have much more to show. But that's when you're supposed to applause and so on. <laughs> You could, have, you could have asked if it was faked first. But. Um, okay. Whoops. Okay. So it's interesting to, uh, to show what happened behind the scene. So it's focusing on, on this BGP VPN driver. We like it because, because it's easy to implement, as I was explaining, with this, this form of a service composition. Uh, but it's not the only one that you could conceive. But still, uh, let me show you how, how this one works. So to make this uh, usable, the only thing that we have to configure is to enable this uh, BGP VPN driver uh, uh, in the configuration. Uh, this is the only one that we have today. We have actually another one that, that's called the dummy driver that doesn't do uh, anything that's used for, for debugging. Uh, 
Um, and we also configure the, 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 the ranges of IDs that each side can use. And as you can see, they don't overlap. You don't have to coordinate the use of the IDs uh, in, this, uh, in this setup. So what happens uh, when the symmetricity of the interconnection definition has been confirmed is that each side will advertise to the other side, uh, will, will provide to the other side the BGP VPN root target. This is the technical name of the identifiers used uh, uh, for BGP VPNs that it will use to advertise its own BGP VPN routes. And to send traffic, the other side will simply import the routes carrying uh, this road target into the relevant network, the network that has been uh, interconnected. And how this is done is that we simply create, the driver simply creates uh, via the, 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 the existing uh, neutron BGP VPN API, the, the BGP VPNs uh, with these IDs and associate these BGP VPNs uh, to the network. So, uh, uh, when preparing specification for the proposals and, and getting into the details, um, and when starting to, uh, to work on the code, uh, we noticed that there were a few things that are interesting to, uh, to, uh, to detail, uh, and actually quite a few, uh, and actually things that are quite important. First of all, uh, as I was saying, we, we need to handle the life cycle of interconnections correctly. It means that when an interconnection is deleted on the one side, we need to actually tear it down and let the other side know that the, 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 um, the interconnection is in a different state. It's not ready anymore. So we pretty quickly came, up, came to the conclusion that we, need a, that we needed a, an explicit uh, state machine, explicit and robust. We also uh, understood that we needed to have something that would be robust, including in the case where the neutron on the other side is not reachable. So we need things to converge again to a usable state when it comes back up or when the connectivity to it comes back up. So we need some form of a periodic retries. This is pretty obvious, but still uh, useful to, uh, to, to mention. And there's something that, um, that we need to get right as well, is that the, the, work, uh, the work to actually uh, handle the exchanges between the two neutrons need to happen behind the scene. The, 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 the typical contract when we build uh, REST APIs is that these REST APIs should return instantly as soon and, and successfully as soon as the, the request that was made is, uh, let's say, legitimate. Uh, and if there is work to do behind the scene, it is, if there is more work to do, typically when it requires uh, interconnections, when it requires um, exchanges with the backends, it would need to be, uh, to be done uh, offline behind the scene. And to actually uh, do this right and be able to handle concurrency between API calls and the behind the scene work, um, we, need, we needed to have a proper locking so that two workers uh, doing behind the scene work do not work on the same uh, interconnection at the same time or to avoid the case where you have an API call, for instance, to delete an interconnection and at the same time um, uh, behind the scene work to, uh, to actually set it up. So we actually um, uh, introduced into the, the design intermediate states in the state machine, which actually act as locks. So we end up with a, a state machine that's, uh, that's not overly complex, but still complex enough. Um, and in, in the end, we, we, we have to realize that we, what we are doing is actually a, um, a, a global state distribution but we, we think we are managing to keep it uh, simple, maybe not stupid, but well, simple enough because the, the, the local state machine, there's a typo in there. The local state machine is, uh, doesn't need to know the state of the, the other state machine. And the interactions between the different, uh, the two clouds uh, is uh, restricted to simple operations, refresh, that is read only. Uh, refresh and get that are both uh, read-only. So this is stuff that you care about if you want to uh, uh, know more about the project and uh, uh, get to contributing to it. But as a user, you, you shouldn't need to, uh, uh, to know much about this. 
So uh, one thing that is interesting to discuss is that, uh, well, with this proposed solution, uh, there are a few things that the, the end user still needs to uh, take care about uh, on its own. One thing is that the end user has to choose uh, IP address ranges and uh, pools consistently across clouds. There's nothing in the solution preventing a user, a user from using the, the same IP twice on both clouds. And of course, if it does, well, you won't have connectivity between the overlapping IPs. The other thing that is not covered is uh, security groups. Uh, what's convenient with security groups, groups is to say, well, I want this security group to have connectivity to port 80 to the other security group. That's the, the convenient way of using security groups. But for this to work in such a scenario involving multiple uh, clouds or multiple regions, we would need uh, one cloud to know about which IP is a member of uh, uh, security groups on the other side. And for now, this proposition doesn't cover this. So what we are left with, with is the, 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 the solution where user will say this security group will have connectivity to port 80 on these IP addresses, and it will have to give these IP addresses uh, via the APIs. So more work will have to be done by end users. It is, acceptable in, it is acceptable in particular because it can be automated in, a, for instance, a hit, hit, uh, hit template, sensible playbooks, or uh, I don't know, Terraform. Uh, but still, it's not. It's not fantastic. Uh, so what we have in mind is uh, keep this topic um, well in mind uh, and, and see if we could uh, prevent users from shooting themselves in the foot uh, uh, with overlapping IP addresses or both, yeah, ideally, uh, be able to make security groups uh, work seamlessly across clouds. But for this to work, we need to have a mechanism where we distribute uh, security group membership between clouds or regions. So before concluding, I will just uh, give simple examples where we believe that the solution can be interesting. The use case that I used when explaining this uh, proposal is uh, the use case where uh, uh, we have two open stack. Uh, so as I was uh, explaining earlier, uh, the solution is uh, relevant in the context where we have two open stack clouds between uh, entities that have a trust relationship between uh, one another. Um, this is the only prerequisite, but it's, uh, it's a significant one. We can actually uh, see uh, another case where this proposal can be relevant. It's the case where you have multiple regions of a single cloud where you need to do such intercon interconnections. Uh, this is a pretty frequent case. case sorry. Um, um, something that I didn't really mention or that's worth ins insisting on at least, is that the solution, uh, even though we explain it with two clouds, generalize easily with uh, more than one. In this case, uh, the end user will have to talk to more than one, uh, more than two clouds. But in the end, the, the exchanges between pairs of neutrons will be, will be the same. And the other case that's interesting to mention is that it's also a solution that will uh, allow to address cases where we have to, uh, where we have some form of uh, heterogeneity uh, between the different clouds in terms of uh, which uh, SDN controller solution is used. So typically in some cases you want to interconnect uh, clouds or region maybe uh, that for design reasons or historical reasons use different SDN controllers. Or you may want to migrate from uh, one SDN control solution to another. Um, for instance, you need to move from A to B and you want to preserve connectivity for workloads until you have fully phased out uh, SDN A. Uh, and in this case, you could rely on, on this solution to, uh, to actually um, uh, create this connectivity between the different regions or between the different, uh, different uh, open stacks using different controllers. So implementation status. Um, so the specs were proposed in uh, last spring. Uh, they were merged uh, a few months afterwards in, uh, in the, the neutron specs uh, repo. Uh, if you want to have a look at the specs, they are linked uh, right here. Um, the project to actually develop the solution was uh, recently created under the neutron umbrella. So it's, uh, it's an official neutron stadium project. 
uh, we plan to, to start uh, uh, contributing code and doing reviews uh, very soon. So uh, if you're interested, it's really the right time to, to jump in uh, because we will uh, uh, actively work on the, the actual code behind this uh, in the next few weeks. So as a wrap, as a wrap up, um, so it's a solution that's meant to allow on-demand interconnections without the need for an orchestrator in the picture and without some of the drawbacks of uh, uh, solutions of tra such as a neutron DPN as a service uh, in terms of a data plane overhead. Uh, it's, it's meant to be relevant uh, when you have two or more OpenStack instances, whether these are different OpenStack clouds or different regions of uh, one cloud including in the case where they use a different uh, SDN solution. The first driver that uh, we, will, we will work on uh, is a driver relying on uh, BDP VPNs, and it will allow the solution to be usable with uh, uh, an interesting set of uh, SDN controller solutions, including Neutron, uh, on day one. If BDP VPN is not a good fit for you, well, since the solution is agnostic, drivers for other solutions can be developed and we will actually uh, welcome it uh, um, uh, greatly. The next steps, uh, well, as I was saying, uh, are code submission and reviews in the context of the OpenStack uh, Neutron Interconnection Project. And perhaps also uh, we'll find the time to, uh, to actually do demos with uh, heterogeneous SDN controllers. It's just a matter of uh, deploying them and, and tweaking them. As I was saying, the, the code is not specific to an SDN controller. And before concluding, I want to thank uh, Yannick Thomas and uh, Przemek uh, Jadek, who are colleagues uh, who have uh, greatly contributed to the maturing and development of, uh, of uh, this proposal, including the, the code that's behind the demo that you've seen. I'm done. Perhaps there are questions in the room? Yeah, you got a mic over there and another one. Yeah, hi. I've got a pretty probably simple question, but still. Uh, so is it possible to interconnect a bunch of uh, networks using uh, like one uh, interconnection just to share not to, like two networks? Like if I have several networks uh, inside one cloud and I want to interconnect them to the several networks in the other cloud. Is it possible, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I, sh I should actually have mentioned it. Yeah, so it works with two clouds, but it also works inside one cloud between different tenants. Is yeah. this what you mean? Or even, uh, even, even for one tenant, if you want to do interconnection without relying on, a, on neutron routers, you, you could use it. But uh, in the case of one tenant, it's, uh, it's not the only solution. Mm -hmm. Sense. But between tenants of a, of, of a given I, uh, region or of a given cloud, it's something that's usable. Yeah, I meant one tenant, but uh, this one tenant have several networks just on one cloud and several networks on other cloud. And all of these like networks should be like reachable uh, between these clouds. Okay, so yes. you would want to interconnect network A1 and A2 on cloud, cloud Mars with network B1 and B2 on cloud Pluto? Yeah, 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 just like four networks, like. In. Yeah, so you, 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 you will have as many interconnections to define, but yes, uh -huh, okay, it would work, sounds... yeah. Hello, first thing, thank you for working on this. This looks very promising. Thank you. Uh, in what form is the proposed code? Is it just an ML2 plugin, or do you need to modify Neutron's code itself? Yeah, so the like many uh, extensions to the base Neutron API, it's com it comes uh, uh, as the form of a, a Neutron service plugin, just like uh, networking SFC, uh, networking BGVPN, or um, Neutron VPN as a service, for instance. So it's, uh, it's a Python module that has to be present on the Neutron controller, and you just declare in a Neutron configuration that you will enable this uh, service plugin. So to be usable, you, have, you need a deployment uh, where Neutron has been uh, packaged to include this Python module. But then you don't need any modification to Neutron itself? 
No, Neutron is, uh, has a plugin architecture, has had a plugin architecture for a while, and it's uh, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I've seen the Go BGP speaker there. Yeah. Have you added support within networking BGP VPN, or you have configured the peering manually between both instances? Yeah, so uh, in this demo, we used the reference driver for networking BGP VPN, networking backpipe. Uh, so it, it, it has its own uh, lightweight, uh, um, I shouldn't say this. It reuses the exact BGP, uh, BGP implementation. So we just configure it to peer with GoBGP locally. Okay. And we use GoBGP just to do the peering between one cloud and the other. So the, there is no GoBGP specific thing in, a, in Neutron or the Neutron agent. Thanks. Hi. Uh, in GV Neutrality, you want to interconnect a lot of OpenStack together. Um, is that possible to establish something like a hub and spoke architecture with um, root redistribution uh, in a middle OpenStack or something like this? That's a good point. It so first of all, the, the answer would depend on the, on the technique being used. Uh, if you take the specific example of uh, BGP VPNs, it would then depend on the back end and how uh, the routes that you import are available for traffic that you receive. I don't know if you follow me. So uh, the answer is kind of a solution specific. Okay. Uh, you could do it. Okay, but thanks. yeah, in terms of uh, API contract, it's, uh, um, it's probably not in the scope of this API, or we would have to modify it to make it clear in the contract, because in the contract, when you define an interconnection, you define it between two networks. You're not saying that you want this uh, interconnection to be transitive to other networks connected to the, the one in the middle. So to make this clean, you would have to evolve the API to say that, yeah, well, I want this interconnection, but I would like uh, connectivity to be transitive, so. Hi. So you have to give the credentials of uh, Cloud B to cloud users of Cloud A, right? Um, not users. You, oh, only, you only need um, uh, Neutron to have credentials for, for one user on the other side that will have read access to interconnection objects. Only to the, so yes. Yeah. So, so it would typically be a user which would be in a service tenant, which would have a, a role scoped to only be able to read interconnections if you want to really secure things. Uh, so you can have a, uh, the credential for this user written in the configuration file. Uh, if you have more than one cloud, sorry, more than two clouds, and you don't want to have a, a complex configuration, these credentials could be credentials to a user that would be handled uh, uh, in a federated system. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>